The 20th Light Division was an infantry division of the British Army, part of Kitchener's Army, raised in the First World War. The division was formed in September 1914 as part of the K-2 Army Group. The division landed in France July 1915 and spent the duration of the First World War in action on the Western Front. Topic. History Topic. 1914–15 Topic. Formation and training The 20th Light Division was authorized on of September 1914 and was to be composed of newly raised battalions from quick marching rifle and light infantry regiments. The 59th and 60th Brigades were concentrated at Blackdown with the division headquarters and other division troops. The 61st Brigade was concentrated at Aldershot, where the medical component also trained. The artillery was formed near Deepcut, the engineers were trained at Chatham. Clothing, in the form of emergency Kitchener blue uniforms, did not arrive until November. Together with a few old rifles for drill practice, the artillery had only two 90mm guns and two 15 pounders per brigade. The supply situation had improved by February 1915 when the division moved to Whitley, by which time the 11th DLI, which had a large number of miners in it had become the Division Pioneer Battalion, trading places in the 61st Brigade with the 12th King's Regiment, the original Divisional Troops Battalion. In April the division marched to Salisbury Plain to complete its training and were joined by the field ambulances after their training in June. The division was inspected by the king at the end of that month, and embarked for France in the later part of July. Topic. France Leaving Amesbury on 20 July, by 26 July the division was concentrated in the Lumbers area 22 miles 35 km east of Boulogne-sur-Mer. By 30 July the division was part of 3rd Corps of the 1st Army, and was billeted in the area between Haysbroke and Armentiers. Training now began in trench warfare, with officers and NCOs being posted to the 8th and 27th Divisions, and bombing, grenades, machine gun and gas mask training for the other troops. The units of the division were rotated though the 8th and 27th Divisions in turn to experience trench warfare first hand between 2 and 17 August. The engineers and pioneers were employed at various tasks behind the lines. At the end of August the division went into the front line in front of Leventy, 5 miles kilometers southwest of Armentier's, 59th and 60th Brigades in the line and the 61st in reserve. In this area the high water table meant that breastworks were required for defense. During September mining and counter-mining were carried out and snipers were trained in response to losses from German snipers. The 61st Brigade moved into the line on 5 September, relieving a brigade of the 8th Division. In the early hours of 13 September a mine was exploded by the Germans under a small salient held by 7th SLI. The crater was occupied by others from the battalion in spite of German shelling and mortaring, and 12 of the soldiers buried by the explosion were rescued alive. The division history records the first gallantry awards earned by men of the division during this action, a military cross and a distinguished service medal. Topic. Blues As part of a subsidiary action north of Luz, the 20th Division with the flanking divisions the Mirat Division to the south and the 8th to the north were to launch a diversionary attack on the German lines, holding any lines gained. After four days of bombardment, with changes in the tempo of the shelling falsely indicating an imminent attack, and other demonstrations from the front line the attack was made on the morning of 25 September. 
troops from the Indian Bareilly Brigade, and two battalions from the 60th Brigade 6th KSLI and 12th RB managed to enter the German lines, but an attempt to drive a sap back towards the British lines was met with heavy enfilade fire and was halted. Unable to be supported the British were forced to retire around midday. The other two brigades made no advance that day but were still shelled in their trenches. Lieutenant George Allen Malling RAMC of the field ambulance attached to the 60th Brigade won the Victoria Cross for treating men in the open under heavy shell fire all through the day. The 60th Brigade had suffered 561 casualties in total, and next day the Pioneers 11th DLI were attached to the Brigade as reinforcing infantry until 10 November, and the 68th Brigade from the 23rd Division was attached as Division Reserve. The three brigades remained in the line, engaged in patrolling, mining, mortaring, sniping and demonstrating in order to prevent the Germans relieving parts of their line. The division's mounted troops rotated through the trenches, and the cyclist company troops provided working parties. On 10 November the Indian Corps to the division's right was relieved and replaced with 11th Corps. This allowed the division to shorten its line to two brigades, the Pioneers and the 68th Brigade returned to their normal roles. For the rest of the year the division's artillery saw the most use, however a trench raid by parties from 10th RB and 11th KRRC was mounted on the night of 12-13 December. The 11th KRRC entered the German trenches, inflicting casualties, the 10th RB party had further to travel over no Mons land and faced an alerted enemy and were forced to withdraw. Topic. 1916 A gas attack, planned for the previous December, was finally launched with the arrival of favorable winds, as the division began to leave the Leventy sector on 9 January 1916. Less than half of the cylinders intended were still in place and trench raids planned for that night were cancelled. The final units of the division arrived in the reserve area on 13 January. After one week's rest and training the division was ordered to the Ypres salient. Topic. Ypres Arriving on the 22nd of January in 6th Corps Reserve Area, officers and NCOs were sent to 14th Division, which the division was to relieve, to become acquainted with the area. On 4 February 6th Corps handed over to the newly formed 14th Corps, 20th Division and the Guards Division. The division was in the northern section of the salient, 2.5 miles kilometers north of Ypres with its left on the canal. The area had been rendered a quagmire by shelling and the trench system was fragmented, shallow and poorly maintained, these remnants being separated by gaps of up to 80 yards 73 meters of mud. On the night of 11-12 February during the first placement of 60th Brigade into the line, the Germans attempted to interrupt the relief, but were thrown back after temporarily capturing one of the trench fragments. They were praised by Army and Corps commanders for their successful actions. In novel conditions which might have placed them at a disadvantage. And by their own division and brigade commanders. Shortly after this isolated points were abandoned, one of which was 20 yards 18 meters from the German line and connected to it by a sap. The engineers and pioneers began the task of improving the trench system, the size of the task indicated by the fact that for a time four long tons 4 .1 t of material per night were being moved from divisional workshops to the 96th Field Company RE, attached to the 60th Brigade. The difference in conditions in the salient can be seen in the casualty figures for the first month, of around 1,000 men killed, wounded or missing, equal to those of the whole five months while in the Laventy sector. In early March the division was strengthened by the arrival of three companies of machine gunners, one attached to each brigade. 
The division was relieved by the 6th Division on 15 April, and went into GHQ and Corps Reserve around Poperinch, with the men of each brigade spending around a week on leave in Calais. During a month of rest and retraining, the artillery was reorganized and the mounted troops and cyclist company left the division. On 18 May the division returned to the salient, relieving the Guards Division to the right of its previous position between Wiltje and Hooge, with the 6th Division on its left and the Canadian Corps on its right. Topic. Battle of Mont Sorel On 2 June the Germans launched an attack on the Canadians to the right of the division. The right of the 60th Brigade received some of the German artillery barrage and two artillery pieces, placed near the Canadian front line to give enfilade fire along the division's front, were lost with most of the crews. Units travelling up to the line were also shelled, including two companies of 12 KRRC, sent to reinforce the Canadian left. The 60th Brigade was targeted by German artillery on 6 June, however it was able to fire on German infantry moving up to attack the Canadians at Hooge, an infantry attack on the brigade later that day was repulsed, but a mine was exploded under the trenches of 12 RB at Gully Farm killing 11 men. Throughout the day the division supported the Canadians with trench mortar fire and the engineers assisted with the maintenance of communications. When the Canadians counter-attacked in the early hours of 13 June the division launched gas, smoke and artillery attacks on the German lines, followed by patrols and trench raids which met with varied success. The remainder of the division's time at Ypres was spent patrolling and in trench raids. On 13 July 60, Brigade was placed under orders of 2nd Anzac Corps and transferred to the Armentiers sector, and supported an unsuccessful attack by the 61st 2nd South Midland Division and the 5th Australian Division on 19 June. The remainder of the division was relieved on 14 July. On 19 July the division began to move back into the line between Messines and Wishate, relieving the 24th Division. The division commander had been in command of the area for little more than an hour when verbal orders were received for a move south. The 60th Brigade rejoined the division on 23 July. On 25-26 July the division moved south leaving its artillery in the Ypres area. Topic. The Somme By 29 July the division was in the line on the north of the Somme battlefield, between Beaumont Hamel and Hebutern, having relieved the 38th Welsh division except for its artillery which stayed to support the 20th. To the right of the division was the 25th Division, and to the left, the 56th 1st London Division. The trenches in this area had been heavily shelled by the Germans in the first days of the battle, and the front could only be held with advance parties. The pioneers and engineers of the division dug new firing trenches and had to repair the communications trenches up to 500 yards 460 meters behind the front line. The division signal company was also employed repairing and replacing the buried telephone cables of the area, all the while under sporadic artillery and trench mortar fire. The 38th Division Artillery was relived by the Guards Division Artillery on 7 August, and on 16 August the division was relieved by the Guards Division. Topic Battle of Guillemont The division returned to the line on the 22nd of August, relieving the 24th Division north of the Guillemont Montauban Road and south of Delville Wood. The 59th and 61st Brigades were in the line with one battalion each in the firing trenches. The division was supported by the artillery of the 6th Division. Preparations for an assault on the 24th of August were begun, repairing and digging new trenches for the assault, but this was interrupted by German artillery on the evening of the 23rd of August followed by an infantry advance on the 11th KRRC, this was broken up by rifle and machine gun fire, but the trenches were damaged again and the battalion suffered around 150 casualties from the bombardment. 
The attack was postponed by the Corps Command, and the division side stepped to the south of the Guilmont Montauban Road, west of the village on 25-26 August. Preparations for the new attack were hampered by a rain and heavy shelling, including the use of gas shells by the Germans. Supply of the front line became difficult and at one point the 29th of August, 37 of the division's vehicles were stuck in the mud of the Carnoy montauban Road. On the night of 28-29 August all available men of all three brigades were working in the mud of the forward area still covered in the bodies of the dead from previous assaults. Coupled with German probing attacks the troops were becoming exhausted and some time out of the trenches was agreed for the 59th and 60th Brigades which were scheduled to make the attack, which had been put back to 3 September. The 59th Brigade had suffered 600 casualties in the line in nine days and the 60th was so weakened that with the exception of 6th Ox and Bucks L.I. it was withdrawn into Corps Reserve and replaced in the division with 47th Brigade from the 16th Irish Division. The 6th Ox and Bucks L.I., still only 550 rifles strong, was attached to 59th Brigade. The 59th Brigade returned to the trenches prepared by the pioneers and engineers during the night of 2-3 September, they were to be the right of the division's advance with the 47th Brigade on the left, each brigade supported by a battalion from the 61st Brigade and a company of the division's engineers and one of pioneers, the remainder of 61st Brigade and the three battalions of 60th Brigade only around 1,000 men were in reserve. The 5th Division was to advance on the division's right, and the 7th Division on its left. Additional artillery support was provided by the artillery from the 8th and 24th Divisions and the Corps Heavy Artillery. The artillery bombardment began at 6 o'clock hours at selected targets, moving around the battle field and including gas at around 8.30 hours. The 5th Division's advance began at 9 o'clock hours, 20th Division advanced at noon behind stationary and rolling barrages, with the advance led by the 10th and 11th RB and the 6th Connaught Rangers and 7th Leinsters. The first objective was occupied by 12.30, a sunken road some 350 yards 320 meters from the start line and parts of the western edge of the village were held by the 6th Ox and Bucks LI and 10th KRRC, parts of the northern edge of the village were held by the 6th Connaught Rangers and 7th Leinsters. The reserve brigade began to move forward. The attack on the second objective, a road running roughly north-south through the eastern part of the village, then northeast towards Ginchy, on average about 100 yards 91 meters further on, began at 12.50, with the 10th and 11th RB in the lead supported by the two KRRC battalions and the 6th Ox and Bucks, and on the 47th Brigade front the 8th Munster Fusiliers with the Leinsters and Connaughts in support. The road was reached by 1330 with the supporting infantry mopping up in the village and an orchard to the south. The assault on the third objective, a road between Ginchy to the north and Wedge Wood to the south, about 400 yards 370 meters east of the village was begun at 1400 hours, while the 59th Brigade encountered only small parties of Germans, the 6th Royal Irish and the Munsters had to rush the last 70 yards 64 meters to the road under fire from positions on it. The final objective was a line between the corner of Lewes Wood to the south, 800 yards 730 meters further forward, and the railway line to the north, 300 yards 270 meters from the third line. However the 5th Division had not gained ground and the right flank of 59th Brigade was open, Brigadier General Shute then lengthened the line 300 yards 270 meters to the right with the 6th Ox and Bucks and used the 7th DCLI to form a flank facing southeast. On the left, 7th Division were reported in the village of Ginchy. The engineers and pioneers continued to consolidate the village and troops from the reserve moved forward through it. An advance to the fourth line was ordered at 1550 hours. However, by 1700 hours the situation had changed, 7th Division were driven out of Ginchy and the 5th Division had not managed to advance to Lewes Wood. 
A bombardment by Corps artillery helped stabilize the line in front of the 20th Division that night. Patrols were made up to the 4th line and on the flanks, one of these from the 12th Kings sent towards Ginchy became isolated during repeated German attacks on that flank between 17.30 and 20.30 hours. That night the 83rd and 96th Engineer Companies, the 7th DCLI and two companies of pioneers continued to consolidate Guilmont, while the 84th Engineer Company and the remaining pioneers strengthened the line on the road. Orders for the next day, the 4th of September, were to send out patrols under artillery support and establish the division on the fourth objective. Due to their losses the Royal Irish and the Munsters were ordered to be replaced by 60th Brigade, 12th KRRC and 12th RB and the 7th KOYLI. The 59th Brigade was also becoming exhausted and two companies of the 11th DLI were sent to relieve the most tired units. The attack began at 1930 hours, and with the 5th Division advancing on the right, reached the final objective. The 47th and 59th Brigades were relieved by the 16th Irish Division during the night and morning of 4-5 September, including the isolated patrol from the 12 Kings, led by Sergeant David Jones. This reduced platoon had held out for two days, repulsing three attacks on the morning of 5 September. For this Sergeant Jones was awarded the Victoria Cross. The remainder of the division left the front line on 7 September. During the battle the division had lost 1973 officers and men killed, wounded or missing. <laughs> Morval and Le Bouff. The division artillery had returned from the Ypres salient to the Somme on 13 September and was posted to 14th Corps but not under command of the 20th Division. While at Ypres 90th Artillery Brigade had been broken up a distributed amongst the other to increase each battery from 4 to 6 18-pounders or 4.5 howitzers. The 91st Artillery Brigade was in action on 15 September supporting the 56th London Division. The division returned to the front on 15 September as 14th Corps Reserve, after a short rest but no reinforcement. The 59th Brigade could muster only 900 rifles, the 60th Brigade 1100 and the 61st Brigade 1200. In the early hours of 16 September the 60th and 61st Brigade went into the front line under orders of the Guards Division, the 61st to the right of the Guards Line opposite Le Bouff and the 60th in reserve. The objective was a trench line around 1,200 yards 1, meters west of the villages of Morval and Le Bouff and was to be taken by 61st Brigade on the right and the 3rd Guards Brigade on the left. The 31st Brigade right flank was open as the 6th Division was held up by the quadrilateral fortification. Due to late orders the 61st Brigade was late forming up and was subject to heavy machine gun and minenwerfer fire, causing many casualties. Following the rolling barrage 7th DCLI gained the objective, however only one company of the 7th SLI gained the line. Both flanks of the 7th DCLI were initially open as the remainder of the 7th SLI had dug in short of the trench line and the Guards Brigade, which had also received their orders late, had faced strong opposition during their advance. In this isolated position the advance to the second line was called off. Later that morning the right flank of the brigade was secured by the 7th KOYLI and the 12th Kings and the 84th Engineer Company reinforced the position. All battalions remained in this position overnight, under fire from the Germans, until relieved the next morning. While the 61st Brigade went into Corps Reserve the remainder of the division relieved the guards in the front line during the night of 16-17 September, the 60th Brigade on the right, the 59th on the left. The relief was made against German opposition, the 59th Brigade moving up under gas attack and the 60th facing German attempts to enter their trenches later that day. On 17 September the 59th Brigade were ordered to capture the remaining 800 yards 730 meters of the trench line not taken the previous day. 
The orders were received only a short time before the attack due to the difficulty in communicating with the front line, which was an old communications trench at right angles to the line of intended advance. One company of the 11th RB did not receive any orders, all the runners to this unit being killed or wounded. With no artillery support available the attack failed with some men of the 10th RB being killed on reaching the German wire. After consolidating the trenches the division was relieved on 21 September. The division's artillery, still under core control supported a number of other divisions in this area, which resulted in the capture of Morval and Le Bouff on 25 September. Topic. Le Transloy The division returned to the front on 25 September and eventually relieved the 21st Division on the night of 29–30 September from halfway between Le Bouff to a point 250 yards 230 meters east of Gedecourt, facing a low ridge beyond which was Le Transloy. The front line was held by 61st Brigade with 60th in support and the 59th Brigade in reserve some 5 miles kilometers behind the line, west of Guilmont. For the next advance the division was to be supported by a strong artillery group consisting of the division's own three artillery brigades, those of the Guards Division and a brigade from the 6th Division. This artillery was crowded together in a valley known as Tok 7 Valley, about 800 yards, 730 meters northeast of Delville Wood, a position known to the Germans and shelled regularly. Before the main assault, on 1 October 7 SLI and 7 DCLI pushed the line forward by 400 yards 370 meters in a series of small posts into dead ground within 200 yards 180 meters of the German line, repelling a counterattack later that day. That night the engineers and pioneers connected and consolidated these posts. On the night of 3-4 October the 60th Brigade joined the 61st in the front line, however due to a break in the weather the assault was put back for two days to 7 October. This allowed the troops who were to make the assault two days rest out of the line, further supplies to be brought up and more front line and communications trenches to be prepared. The strength of the brigades had recovered to a total of just under 6,500 men in total, still only slight over 50% of the nominal strength. The objective was to establish a line over the crest of the ridge overlooking Le Transloy on the second German trench and was only a small part of an attack of the whole front of 4th Army. On the left 61st Brigade would attack with 6th Ox and Bucks LI and 12th RB with 12th KRRC in support and 6th KSLI in reserve and on the right for 60th Brigade, 7th KOYLI and 12th Kings with 7th SLI in support and 7th DCLI in reserve. On 7 October the preceding artillery bombardment managed to cut most of the German wire except for some on the 60th Brigade front. At 13.45 hours the attack began behind the rolling barrage with each battalion advancing in four lines. The uncut wire caused delays and heavy casualties to the 6th Ox and Bucks and 12th RB and an open left flank, caused by a heavy German bombardment on 12th Eastern Division, caused casualties to the 61st Brigade from enfilade fire. In spite of this the first two lines of troops took the first trench, Rainbow Trench, and the third and fourth lines formed up beyond it ready for the next stage. At 14.05 hours the next barrage began and the second trench, Cloudy Trench, was found to be little more than a line of disturbed earth when it was taken against lighter resistance only ten minutes later. The division, now digging in on its new line, was now in a salient with exposed flanks and a gap of around 350 yards 320 meters between the brigades with the leading battalion lines commanded by a captain 12th Kings and a lieutenant 7th KOLI. Companies from the support and reserve battalions were brought forward to fill in the gaps and German counterattacks later that day were beaten off. The engineers and pioneers together with other troops established a communication trench to the front line, and men from the 59th Brigade came forward to continue work in the starting lines. 
The division was relieved by 6th Division on the night of 8–9 October, having lost 1,112 killed, wounded and missing from the brigades and taken 192 German prisoners. It moved to True for a period of rest. While there, Corps commander praised the men of the division for their part in the Somme battles and added, I have asked the Army commander and the commander-in-chief not to take away the 20th Division if they can help it, and they have promised to do their best. I would not lose the 20th Division for crowns and crowns. The division's artillery remained in the line as part of the Corps artillery group, assisting in later assaults. The remainder of the division would spend two months out of the line resting, retraining and absorbing much needed replacements. The division returned to the line on 9 December, relieving the 29th Division around 1 mile 1 kilometers southwest and south of La Transloy. The weather was bad and communications between the front line and rear area was slow at first, a relief to the firing trench taking as long as nine hours, with only some improvement achieved by the time the division left the area. After a relatively uneventful time the division was relieved by the 17th Northern Division on 25 December. The 93rd Artillery Brigade was transferred permanently to Army control about this time. Topic. 1917 The division returned to the front on 4 January, relieving the guards 2.5 miles 4 kilometers south of La Transloy in a line through the village of Saly Salizel. Two brigades, the 60th and 61st were at the front with two battalions each in the fire trench, the guards division was to the right and the 17th, northern, to the left. The front line consisted of a series of isolated posts, some only 10 yards .1 meters from the Germans. The division's artillery was once again under command of the division for a while as part of the Corp Group, with 29th Division's artillery and other units. Until relieved on 30 January by 17th Northern Division, the 20th held the line repulsing German attacks with the machine gunners and artillery providing covering fire for other formations' attacks. On 10 February the division returned to the front, on the northern edge of their previous position and lost one of the more isolated advanced posts which was out of sight from the British line and which the division had been given permission to abandon shortly before its loss. By the beginning of March the British were aware that the Germans intended to withdraw to a more favourable line. 1918. The Hindenburg Line The Germans began to retire from the line in front of 20th Division on 17 March, after morning patrols had found them still in place. Thereafter the division kept pace with the German rearguard and by 28 March had advanced some 6 miles kilometers from its position in front of La Transloy. Here the Germans established a line of resistance along the line of the villages of Finns, Neuville Bourjonville and Rueilcourt. During this time the division had been transferred to 15th Corps and had been joined on 24 March by the 217th Machine Gun Company as the divisional machine gunners. The initial advance of the division's artillery still part of the Corps group had been hampered by the torn-up ground of the battlefield, on one occasion taking up to six hours to move guns one mile 1 kilometers, and on another losing one gun in a water-filled shell hole. In order to improve the roads in the division's rear the 96th Engineer Company, 11th DLI, 10th RB, and 7th KOYLI were detached under Corps orders to improved road and rail communications, returning to the division at the end of the month. On 28 March the 61st Brigade supported by the 91st Artillery Brigade, 84th Engineer Company and a squadron of the Corps Cavalry Regiment, King Edward's Horse, were ordered to take the villages of Neuville Bourjonville, 7th DCLI, and Rueilcourt, 12th Kings. 
starting from the village of YTREs at 2015 hours against heavy machine gun fire Nouvelle Bourjonville was entered early on 29 March and was occupied by 2.30 hours with posts established 100 yards 91 meters to its east. The attack on Rueilcourt was defeated by a wire trap not previously known and the battalion entrenched 500 yards 460 meters southwest of the village. The next night the village was found empty and occupied by the 7th SLI while the 59th Brigade established a line along the northern half of the Nouvelle Bourjonville, Finns Road. On 4 April the 59th Brigade supported by 83rd Engineer Company and the whole of the division artillery attacked a German line between the village of Metz 1.7 miles kilometers west of Nouvelle Bourjonville and the corner of Havrencourt Wood. The 10th and 11th KRRC suffered heavy casualties, around 25% due to machine gun and rifle fire but occupied the village some two hours after the assault began. German prisoners stated that they had not expected to be attacked until 7 April. Thereafter the line was continually pushed forwards, and before the end of April was in front of the Hindenburg Line from north of Tresco, 9 miles 14 kilometers from La Transloy, northwest through Havrencourt Wood to the Canal du Nord. For the next few weeks the division had a relatively quiet time, apart from digging the new front line. On 23 May the division was relieved by the 40th Division and it was transferred to the 5th Army, 4th Corps. The division was redeployed 7.5 miles .1 kilometers to the northwest facing Kayant where 4th Corps relieved 1st Anzac Corps, 48th South Midland Division was to the division's right and 58th 2 over 1 of a Stone London Division of 5th Corps to its left. The line here, from approximately 1,000 yards 910 meters east of Bullcourt in the original Hindenburg system to just east of Lagnacourt, was a series of posts, as the trench system had been comprehensively wrecked, and the divisional artillery could only be sighted in valleys which ran towards the German lines and were so under observation. Three weeks of active patrolling and trench raids followed with the division suffering heavy bombardment, especially during reliefs. By the 22nd of June the artillery had left the line to refit and on the 29th of June the rest of the division was relieved by 62nd, 2nd West Riding, Division. Topic. Third Battle of Ypres The division concentrated southeast of Amiens on 1 July for rest and retraining. The artillery marched to the Ypres salient over the first two weeks of July. Here the two brigades rejoined the 93rd Army Artillery Brigade in the 14th Corps Artillery Group and covered the corps front between the Ypres Pilcom Road and the canal in the north of the salient, where 20th Division had been in 1916. The gun batteries and ammunition column suffered casualties from German counter-battery fire. The rest of the division arrived on 20 July and went into the 14th Corps area as a reserve. On 25 July 10th and 11th KRRC and 10th RB were detached to 38th Welsh Division as carrying parties and the 59th and 217th Machine Gun Companies were also sent forward. On 30 and 31 July the 59th Brigade, 83rd Engineer Company and the 11th DLI went forward to positions west and south of Elverding, some 2 miles .2 kilometers west of the front line and the artillery fired fixed and rolling barrages for the advance of the Guards and 38th Divisions during the Battle of Pilcom Ridge. The subsequent advance of the artillery to the YESR canal was made difficult by the rain that fell from the afternoon of 31 July to 3 August. On 6 August the division relieved the 38th Welsh, with the 61st Brigade in the front along 1,000 yards 910 meters of the Steenbeek with its left on the railway line. Topic. Battle of Langemark 
On 7 August the 59th Brigade was tasked with establishing a series of posts of the eastern bank of the Steenbeek, as the 11th Northern Division to the right and the 29th Division to the left had already done. This was complicated on the 20th Division front by the marshy nature of the ground on both sides of the stream and a German strong point at Aubonne Gite, 300 yards 270 meters east of the stream on the Langemark Road. Initial attempts by two companies of the 11th KRRC made on 8 August failed, as did another with two companies of the 10th KRRC given artillery support on of August, a third attack on 14 August by six companies of 10th and 11th RB reached the Obonjit pillboxes, but could not take the largest of them and were forced back by a counterattack 200 yards 180 meters, with heavy casualties of over 210 officers and men. A fourth attempt on 15 August was cancelled and the ground gained was deemed sufficient for forming up for the forthcoming attack. The larger operation, a phase of the Third Battle of Ypres, was to begin on 16 August, with 60th and 61st Brigades attacking northeast towards, around and past Langemark. After the previous week's losses 59th Brigade, as Division Reserve, was reinforced with two battalions, 10th and 15th Battalions, the Welch Regiment, from 38th Welsh Division. The 83rd and 84th Engineer Companies placed wooden bridges across the Steenbeek to allow the initial assaulting troops to form up on the east bank, and in spite of having to form up in some places within 80 yards 73 meters of German posts in front of the Obonjit strong point, the build-up on the east bank was achieved without the Germans being aware of the movement even while it was conducted through the usual harassing, but undirected, artillery and machine gun fire. The three phase lines were a road through the west of Langmark, the second a line east of the village and the third on a road junction about 1 mile 1 kilometers from the Steenbeek. The 60th Brigade would attack on the right on a one battalion front, through the village, the 61st, on the left, on a two battalion front along the railway line. The 61st Brigade front would widen, and the 60th Brigade's front veer northward after Langemark, widening the division's front to 1,400 yards 1, meters at the last phase line. In 60th Brigade the 6th Ox and Bucks were to take the first two phase lines then the 12th KRRC and the 6th KLSI advance to the last, screening the German reserve known to be in Polkapel. On the 61st Brigade front two companies each of the 7th KOYLI and the 7th SLI were each allotted to the 1st and 2nd phase lines, 12th Kings and 7th DCLI taking the 3rd. Sections of the brigade machine gun companies and trench mortar batteries would also accompany the assault. For the remaining hard points at Obonjit, a company of the 11th RB, familiar with the area, and a party of the 83rd Engineer Company would advance with the Oxfords to reduce and mask them while the rest the advance continued. The 29th Division were to the left and the 11th Northern Division on the right the artillery barrage and infantry advance began at 4.45 hours, with the assault on the Obonjit blockhouse starting at the same time from the 11th RB who had crawled up within a few yards of the position. It was soon captured, but only after being able to fire at the 61st Brigade advance in Enfilade. The most severe holdup was due to the condition of the ground, which was Nothing more than a swampy crater field as far as the final objective, and particularly bad up to the first objective. The first wave of the 6th Ox and Bucks gained the first line at 520 with few losses. On the 61st Brigade front the 7th KOYLI were fired on from blockhouses in Langemark and at Langemark Railway Station causing heavy losses to the officers. Here Private Wilfred Edwards won the Victoria Cross attacking one of the blockhouses, and the first line on this brigade front was reached at 540. The advance to the second line began at 545, and the second wave of the 6th Ox and Bucks reached the second line soon after. Behind them the 6th KSLI and 12th KRRC, mopping up in the village, came under fire from another blockhouse. 
Crossing 250 yards 230 meters of open ground Sergeant Edward Cooper subdued the position capturing 46 prisoners and seven machine guns, winning the second Victoria Cross of the day in the division. These two battalions then formed up on the second line. On the left in 61st Brigade, the KOYLI was left with only one officer as a company commander, the others being led by sergeants. The 12th Kings and 7th DCLI which had suffered casualties in the mopping up, now formed up in the second line. The advance to the third line began at 7.20 and by 7.45 the 60th Brigade reached the final line after opposition from its right flank and the 61st Brigade reached the line at 8 o'clock. The division was in contact with both flanking divisions on the final objective, and had taken around 400 prisoners, including a battalion commander, a section of Howeisers, a 77mm field gun and around 25 machine guns. A division stretcher bearer party, some 200 men strong, was created for the battle and tasked with clearing the battlefield of wounded. They worked throughout the day and night, and were regarded as an unqualified success. The Germans counter-attacked at 1600 at the junction of the brigades and drove back the 12th KRRC and 12th Kings 200 yards 180 meters, with one company of the 12th KRRC being almost wiped out. The next day an attempt to retake the ground partly succeeded, the mixed force of 12th Kings, 7th SLI and a company of 7th DCLI retaking the line on the right, but the attack of the 12th RB was defeated by enfilade fire. That night the division was relieved by the 38th Welsh Division, except for the artillery which remained under orders of the Welsh. Topic. Eagle Trench After three weeks out of the line the division returned to the front on 5 September northeast of Langemark. However, having had no reinforcement, it was under strength after the Langemark battles with an average battalion strength of only 350 rifles. Relieving the 38th Welsh Division, an attack on the trench line opposite Polkapel was scheduled for 20 September. Preceded by a hurricane bombardment, the 59th Brigade on the left and the 60th Brigade on the right attacked that morning with the left flank reaching its objective, the right flank was held up by fire from strong points and the center, the inner flanks of both brigades, making no progress due to fire from Eagle Trench, which was later discovered to be well sighted between two 8 feet 2 .4 meters embankments, and had an excellent field of fire. The attack was repeated that evening, with the artillery using smoke which was only partly successful, the 11th RB gaining a foothold in the trench but at a cost of two-thirds of its men and 11 out of 16 officers. The 60th Brigade gained further ground on the right. A follow-on attack was planned for the 22nd of September with the aid of two tanks, but these became stuck in Langemark, and the attack was re-planned for the next day without them. A German counterattack on the 60th Brigade, 35 minutes before the planned attack was beaten off, and the attack began at 7 o'clock. With trench mortars bombarding the trench, and both brigades working their way to the center of the trench from the ends they held using bombing parties grenade throwers, the 12th KRRC from the south, 10th RB from the north and frontally from the west. A total of 158 prisoners were taken and a number of machine guns captured. The attack earned praise from the army commander, General Sir Hubert Goff. Until the division was relieved at the end of the month the pioneers and engineers labored to establish and strengthen communications to the front line through Langemark, the artillery remained in the salient and assisted in attacks that captured Pocapel and conducted a difficult relocation across the muddy ground. By the time the artillery was relieved on 18 the October they had been in action for three months without relief. Topic. Cambrai 
On 1 October the division less the artillery entrained for Bapam, and by 10 October had relieved the 40th Division with all three brigades in the line from villers Ploich to villers Gislanes, about 1.5 miles kilometers north to southeast of Gauzocourt. The 11th DLI Pioneers was ordered to send 200 men to strengthen the infantry after the Ypres battles, and received lower fitness men in return. Now part of 3rd Corps of the 3rd Army, the division had a quiet time in the line and was rejoined by its artillery on 25 October. On 29 October the division line was shortened when the 55th West Lancashire Division took over the southern third of the line around villers Gislanes. Brigade commanders and staffs were informed of the plan of attack early in November, other brigade officers only a week before the attack. During their time in the line, those battalions rotated out of the line were trained in infantry tank cooperation. The artillery was moved to new positions in the open closer to the line during the nights of 16 to 19 November. In the weeks preceding the attack, the Division Signals Company was detailed to provide the telephone and signal lines of three attacking divisions, laying 137 miles, 220 kilometers of armored cable. On 19 November the 60th and 61st Brigade entered the new division line from villers Ploich, southeast to a point 1,000 yards 910 meters northwest of Gonalu facing Welsh Ridge, with the outposts of the old line still manned by the 20th Division. The 59th Brigade was in reserve at Gauzocourt. In spite of the noise the tanks made moving up to the line the Germans did not respond. At midnight a continuous roar in the distance informed us that the tanks were moving up to their positions. Everyone was in a dither of excitement. The noise of their approach got louder and louder, minute by minute our anxiety increased, as we could not think it possible that the enemy could help hearing the outrageous noise they were making. As they approached their positions in the dark the guides in front were shouting directions at the top of their voices. We were expecting every minute the German batteries to open up along the whole front line with all the guns they could bring to bear. The tank close to me made the most shattering noise. It seemed to have an open exhaust, and the captain, or whoever was in charge, seemed to have no realization of the close proximity to the enemy. However, he got the great hulk into his allotted position, and at last stopped his engine, and still nothing happened. The plan called for the 60th Brigade, supported by 24 tanks of A Battalion and 61st Brigade, supported by 36 tanks of I Battalion, to advance behind a standing barrage launched at the same time as the infantry advance. This advance was to be made between the line of the villers Ploich, Markoing Railway and a line 2,500 yards 2, meters to southeast, in a north-easterly direction astride Welsh Ridge and the valley to the southeast of it. The 60th Brigade, on the left, with the 12th KRRC, left, and 6th Ox and Bucks L.I., right, in the lead, and 61st Brigade, on the right, with the 7th DCLI left and 7th SLI right in the lead were to advance to a line some 2000 yards 1800 meters from the start line the second objective line with the remaining battalions in the advance was around another 2000 yards 1800 meters ahead on a line containing the whole of Welsh Ridge whereupon the 59th brigade and the 29th division would pass through the 20th division to a line north of Markoing and Masniers over the Canal du Nord the 12th division was to the right and the 6th division to the left the first wave of tanks advanced at 6.10 hours on the morning of 20 November with the artillery barrage, provided by six artillery brigades, including the division's 91st Artillery Brigade, beginning at 6.20. Opposition was comparatively light, with only the 12th Kings and 12th KRRC encountering delaying opposition, Rifleman A. E. Shepard, 12th KRRC, winning the VC at one of the strong points encountered. Large numbers of Germans, overwhelmed by the tanks, surrendered or ran away. They all had their hands up in the air and were running around as fast as they could. 
It was one of the funniest things I have ever seen, these poor devils running along, their heads bobbing up and down and their eyes starting out of their heads, running for dear life and not knowing where to go or what to do. We sent out two men with fixed bayonets who brought the to the CO. When I saw them closer, I felt very sorry for them, but they seemed pleased that we had not shot them as they expected. The first line was occupied by 925. The advance to the second line was more vigorously contested by the Germans in the Hindenburg Line support trenches, with the 7th KOYLI and 12th RB suffering heavy casualties reducing strong points on their respective brigade fronts. However the final objectives were reached by 11 o'clock hours. The 59th Brigade led by the 10th and 11th RB and a number of troops of the 1 over 1 of a stone Northumberland Yeomanry, having left the start line at 9-10 hours, passed along the valley southeast of Welsh Ridge, and passed through the lines established by the 60th and 61st Brigades. The 10th RB advancing towards the canal between Markowing and Les Rues Verts, and the 10th RB towards a line running south of Les Rues Verts. Outflanking a strong point 800 yards 730 meters south of Markowing, a company of the 11th RB forced a bridgehead across the canal and men of the 29th Division began to cross. C Company occupied the village of Les Rues Verts up to the canal after some street fighting. In Les Rues Verts, facing Massniers across the main bridge, the 11th RB were held up by firing from the opposite bank. After the arrival of three tanks, the first of which broke down, the others succeeded in silencing the fire using their six-pounder guns, intending to transport a bombing party of the 11th RB across the canal. The tank, Flying Fox, collapsed the bridge. The 91st Artillery Brigade had moved off from its positions at 10.30 that morning, and despite broken down tanks on the road it was using, was in action that afternoon some 2,500 yards, 2,300 meters in front of the old front line. By nightfall the 59th Brigade were established along approximately 2,000 yards 1,800 meters of the line of the canal from Les Rues Verts East, with one company of the 10th RB in the village of Les Rues de Vignay just west of the canal. The KRRC battalions were stationed in a line south of Les Rue Verts, and the 60th and 61st Brigades were consolidating their positions on the northeastern end of Welsh Ridge. A night attack by the 11th RB to take the canal crossings at Crevacher was repulsed. During the day the division had taken over 760 prisoners, the next day a planned attack by the 59th Brigade, with the 29th Division on its left, and the assistance of 12 tanks, on the canal line gained a little ground around the village of Les Rues Vignay, but caused the 11th KRRC many casualties after the 29th Division's attack was cancelled and the tanks ran out of petrol. Over the next few days as the struggle for Berlin Wood was taking place the division consolidated its line which ran from the 12th Division's left flank at Lato Wood, approximately 3,750 yards 3,430 meters south of Les Rues Vert on the canal and 4,250 yards 3,890 meters east of the start line on Welsh Ridge, northeast along the top of a spur for 3,750 yards 3 3430 meters then north for 500 yards 460 meters to the canal in front of this was an outpost line the 7th sli was attached to the 88th brigade of 29th division between 21 and the 24th of november and cleared snipers from massniers by 30 November the line was held by the 59th Brigade on the right 10th and 11th KRRC in front, just returned from seven days in reserve, and the 61st Brigade on the left, 12th Kings and 7th SLI in the front. The reserve battalions were in the valley southeast of Welsh Ridge. None of the battalions had more than 400 men and some had less than 300. The division's artillery brigades were at the head of the valley southwest of Welsh Ridge approximately 2,000 yards 1,800 meters north of Gonalu. Topic. German counterattack 
The relief of the 60th Brigade headquarters had not been completed when the Germans began their counterattack. After attacking the 12th and 55th Divisions on the right south flank at 7 o'clock hours, the division was shelled with smoke, mustard gas and high explosive half an hour later. Aided by a thick mist in the valleys and by air support elsewhere, the Germans attacked the 20th Division's front and overwhelmed the outposts, some of which were in any case out of sight of the main line due to the convex slope of the spur northwest of the canal. As the attack reached the main line the Germans also appeared on the division's right rear flank, having passed through the 12th Division's lines. With communications cut the reserve battalions had no sooner heard of the attack than they were subject to it, the headquarters and two companies of the 10th RB being overrun in this manner. The divisional and brigade machine gun companies also lost many of their guns and men, only a few men of the 217th MG Company, north of Lato Wood, escaping from the assault. The 83rd and 84th Engineer Companies were also swept up in the fighting, with the commanding officer of the 84th Company assuming command of the 61st Brigade when its senior officers were killed. Two companies of the Pioneers 11th DLI, were in action at the northern end of Welsh Ridge the other two behind Gauzocourt. The remains of the two brigades fell back onto the slopes of Welsh Ridge. The division's artillery was also directly attacked. After the infantry had retreated through the 92nd Brigade's position, the artillery was firing at point-blank range before being overrun. Later in the day the 11th RB, accompanied by some of the artillerymen retook the position and were able to remove the breaches of the guns, before pulling back. By the evening the division's line ran from Gauzocourt to Gonalu then along the east and northeast slopes of Welsh Ridge. To reinforce the division the 2 6th Battalion Sherwood Foresters and 1st Battalion the Buffs from the 6th Division were sent to the 59th and 60th Brigades respectively. That night, the 91st Artillery Brigade was withdrawn from its forward position some 3,000 yards 2, meters, to bow camps. The next day, the 1st of December, the Germans directed their attacks on the 59th and 60th Brigades in the middle and southern part of the line. At one point the three forward companies of the 12th RB had only one uninjured officer among them, and the 12th KRRC also suffered heavily. The next day, 60th Brigade was relieved by 183rd Brigade of the 61st 2nd South Midland Division, and it repulsed three attacks, with the Rifle Brigade battalions of 59th Brigade also suffering losses during the fighting. On the night of 2-3 December the 59th and 61st Brigades were relieved by the rest of the 61st Division, and the Division HQ was set up in Sorrel 6,300 yards 5, meters southwest of Gauzocourt. The 91st Artillery Brigade remained in action on the Cambrai front for a further two weeks as the British withdrew to the defensible Flesquieras line. After a few days in Corps Reserve, the division was moved north joining the 4th Army, and by 12 December was concentrated some 22 miles 35 kilometers southwest of Ypres. The artillery rejoined the division on 24 December. Topic 1918 On 7 January the division relieved the 30th Division in the 9th Corps area, astride the Menin Road, just northwest of Gellivelt. The 60th Brigade was on the left, the 61st on the right, with the New Zealand Division to the left and the 37th Division to the right. The division's time here was relativity quiet, aside from the usual patrolling in no man's land and an artillery and trench mortar demonstration for a trench raid by the 37th Division o the night of 9-10 January. A reprisal trench raid early on 10 January was beaten back by the 6th KSLI. The main problems were caused by the weather, which was either freezing, or wet, which made the regular relief of the front line, every 48 or 24 hours difficult. At the end of January the division was transferred to 22nd Corps, which had taken over the sector. In early February the division was reorganized into a three battalion per brigade structure, caused by manpower shortages, some political in origin. 
The 10th KRRC and 10th RB were disbanded, with the opportunity taken to reinforce the other battalions of those regiments in the division. The 6th Ox and Bucks was also disbanded and the 7th KOYLI became the 14th Entrenching Battalion, replacing the two battalions lost from the 59th Brigade was the 2nd Battalion Cameronians Scottish Rifles, at full strength of over 1,000 rifles transferring from the 8th Division. The division's trench mortar batteries were reduced, with the heavy battery, V-20, transferring to 22nd Corps and the medium Z-20 battery being broken up and distributed to the X-20 and Y-20 batteries. The artillery brigades were strengthened after the losses of the Cambrai battles. The division was relieved by 37th Division on 19 February, and was moved south to the Somme. Topic. Spring Offensive It was known that the Germans would mount an offensive with troops freed from the Eastern Front. On 23 February the division arrived in the 5th Army as GHQ Reserve, attached to 18th Corps and was billeted in the area of Ham about 16 miles 26 kilometers southwest of the front line at St. Quentin. Here the division prepared defences behind the anticipated battle zone. On 10 March the division was placed on 12 hours notice to move, on 20 March this was reduced to 1 hour, and 5 o'clock hours on 21 March it was ordered to man its battle stations. Topic. The Somme 1918 the plan was for the division to support the font line between the river Somme and its tributary the Omignon some 8.5 miles .7 kilometers east of St. Quentin, with the artillery being sent to support the 36th Welsh 92nd Brigade, and 30th Division's 91st Brigade, north and south of the division respectively. The division was ordered to move at 1300 hours. By 1500 hours the brigades were deployed, 59th Brigade on the left north, between the Omignon and the village of Vaux and Vermandos 3.2 miles 5 .1 kilometers to the southeast, 60th Brigade, reinforced with three companies of the 11th DLI, in the center between Vaux and Vermandos and the Somme 4.6 miles 7 .4 kilometers to the south and the 61st Brigade astride the Somme between the villages of Tugny and Pont and St. Simon, 1.3 miles, 2.1 kilometers, to the southeast. During the night of the 21st of March, the 36th Division was forced to retire south of the Somme with the 61st Brigade and 91st Artillery Brigade covering them, at which point they came under the orders of that division. During the 22nd of March the 60th Brigade came under artillery attack, and the 59th Brigade was moved into a rear area due to the corps to the north being outflanked. Further movements meant that by the evening of the 22nd of March the 59th and 60th Brigades were acting as a rearguard for the corps between Lancy 7.3 miles 11.7 kilometers east of St. Quentin, Douye 2.25 miles 3.62 kilometers south of Lancy and Bray St. Christophe 3.7 miles 6.0 kilometers southeast of Douye. During the night the brigades were ordered to retire across the Somme, some 2.8 miles 4.5 kilometers to the southwest, and conducted a fighting withdrawal as they did so. The engineer companies completed the destruction of the bridges across the Canalist River. On 23 March the division held the Somme Canal line from 2 miles 3.2 kilometers west of Ham, held by the 11th DLI and Party's men from other divisions, to Bathencourt sur Somme 4 miles 6.4 kilometers to the northwest, held by the 11th RB reinforced by the 182nd Brigade. The 60th Brigade fought back the Germans breaking through at Ham, and later in the day the division received more reinforcements, exchanging the 182nd Brigade for the other brigades 183rd and 184th from the 61st Division, and two batteries of a Canadian Motor Machine Gun Battalion. 
During the night of 23 March it became obvious from the noises they were making that the Germans were preparing to cross the canal at many points. On 24 March the Somme was crossed and the division was attacked on both flanks and the center, aided by German artillery, trench mortaring and aircraft. Counter-attacks temporarily held up the German advance, but at a heavy cost, the 11th RB losing two companies almost in their entirety and the 2nd Scottish Rifles, won. By mid-morning the right of the line 1,400 yards 1, meters from the Somme, behind the village of Canazy was being held by a platoon from the 83rd Field Company and an assortment of stragglers with an open right flank. By the afternoon the Germans had forced the 8th and 30th Divisions out of contact with the 20th Division and it was forced to fall back a further 2.5 miles kilometers on a northeast facing line between Mesnil saint nicaise and Boverchi on the Canal du Nord 3.75 miles kilometers away. The 183rd Brigade formed a northern flank, south of them were the mixed-up troops of 59th Brigade, and the 60th Brigade on the south flank. During the afternoon the division was reinforced by four companies of French troops from the French 22nd Division and a French machine gun company. That night, the 59th Brigade on the north flank, now reinforced with the 25th Entrenching Battalion and the Divisional Reinforcement Battalion, formed a week before from details from all branches of the division, and a mixed batch of men from the 8th and 61st Divisions, was forced back 2 miles .2 kilometers by a renewed German attack. By the next morning, the 25th of March, the Germans were continually turning the division's left northern flank, and by the afternoon only 62 officers and men of a company, 2nd Scottish Rifles escaped the Germans. On the 60th Brigade front the headquarters of the 12th KRRC was captured that evening, by which time the division was forming a new line 2.5 miles kilometers to the rear. The 61st Brigade returned to the division, after a hard retreat, often out of contact with the 36th Division, and at one point holding a line 6,000 yards 5, meters, long with two battalions. Including companies from the 11th DLI and 20th MG Battalion, the brigade had been reduced to a strength of nine junior officers and 440 men, and was reformed into a four-company composite battalion headquarters, Kings, SLI and DCLI companies. The 91st Artillery Brigade remained under orders of the French 9th Division, the same day the division came under orders of the French 133rd Division and was ordered to withdraw to Roy, where the division's headquarters had retired to, 10.5 miles .9 kilometers southwest from the division line on 23 March, and then on to Le Quesnel a further 9 miles 14 kilometers northwest. With the Germans only 4 miles .4 kilometers away to the north, the 61st Brigade Composite Battalion was tasked with forming the left flank between the villages of Grunny, Cramery and Lanecourt. The Germans were already in Lanecourt, as were French units and a confused night was had with British, French and Germans patrols challenging each other in their different languages. The 59th and 60th Brigades had withdrawn to Roy by midnight 25 March, and set out for Le Quesnel at 7 o'clock hours on 26 March, by which time the composite battalion had been pushed back 2 miles .2 kilometers. .During that day the DCLI company fought for nearly 12 hours at the village of parville le canoy and withdrew with only two officers and nine men from an original 106 of all ranks. On 27 March the division was holding a 2.5 miles kilometers line east of Le Quesnel across the Roy Amiens Road behind the 30th Division, with 60th Brigade to the south, 59th Brigade in the center and the 61st Brigade Composite Battalion to the north reinforced with the 678 officers and men of the 25th Entrenching Battalion. The 59th and 60th Brigade came under attack that day as the Germans pushed back the line and attempted to outflank the division to the south. 
Before dawn on 28 March the 59th and 61st Brigades were relieved by 401st Regiment of the French 133rd Division. The relief of the 60th Brigade was interrupted by a heavy German attack affecting the 6th KSLI, 12th RB and the 11th DLI, which included accurate artillery and machine gun fire. The brigade managed to extricate itself and by 1500 hours had rejoined the rest of the division near Demin 4.5 miles 7.2 kilometers northwest of Le Quesnel. The division now came under order of 19th Corps, and became part of the Corps' hard-pressed right flank. On 29 March it was deployed between the villages of Demine and Meziers and Santerre, 2 miles 3.2 kilometers to the southeast across the Roy Amiens Road. The 59th Brigade, now reduced to 770 men, held the south of the line and 61st Brigade Composite Battalion the north, 60th Brigade was in reserve. The 92nd Artillery Brigade rejoined the division. The Germans attacked at midday and forced the south flank. Reinforcements from the much depleted 149th Brigade of 50th Northumbrian Division were received. One quarter, one fifth, and one sixth Northumberland Fusiliers, themselves needing reinforcement from the 4th East Yorkshire Regiment, 5th DLI, and the 22nd Entrenching Battalion of the 50th Division. The 60th Brigade was brought out of reserve, and the division was ordered to recapture Meziers, from which the French had been driven. The 60th Brigade attacked at 1600 hours and although men from the three weakened battalions involved, 12th KRRC, 12 RB and 11th DLI, the last only 140 strong, succeeded in reaching the far side of the village, a simultaneous attack by the Germans on Villers Ox Arab 1,100 yards 1, meters to the east left them with an open flank and they were forced to retire despite taking 50 prisoners and destroying a battle battery of German trench mortars. A counterattack by the 149th Brigade restored the southern flank. By the morning of the 30th of March, the division and its reinforcements held the road from Demine to Moroy 3.75 miles, 6.04 kilometers to the southwest. This was held during that day with the help of troops from the 2nd Cavalry Division. The next day, the 31st of March, the division was continually attacked and was forced back despite counter-attacks by 59th and 149th brigades supported by the 92nd Artillery Brigade. By repeated outflanking moves, the 60th Brigade losing what was left of D Company 12th KRRC in its entirety. A final counter-attack by the remaining 120 men of 6th KSLI the remnants of 11th DLI and cavalry troops succeeded in maintaining a bridgehead south of dormant sur la luce over the river Luce 9.5 miles 15.3 kilometers southeast of Amiens. On the night of 1 April the division, less the artillery, was withdrawn from the front. The division's artillery continued supporting British, French and Australian troops in the Somme area, and switched commands frequently, with batteries occasionally detached to other formations. Both of the division's artillery brigades were in the same part of the line, near villers Bretonu by 17 April although under different commands 58th, 2 over 1 of a Stone London Division and 5th Division, Australia, respectively. They were to take part in the Battle of villers Bretonu, coming under sustained bombardment and heavy gas attacks, with some of the gunners of 91st Artillery Brigade acting as infantry, and B&D batteries of the 92nd firing over open sights at times on 24 March. The 91st Artillery Brigade was relieved on 25 March, the 92nd on 27 March, in both brigades artillery and the supply columns suffered heavy losses. Topic. Lens The division was moved to near Abbeville, in order to rest and absorb replacements for its losses. The 61st Composite Battalion had been reduced to less than 100 men, and the other brigades were similarly weakened. On 17 April the division was moved to villers Châtel, about 10 miles 16 kilometers northwest of Arras, returning to 18th Corps control, this time under 1st Army. 
It remained there training its replacements until the end of April. Between 1 and 3 May the division relieved the 3rd Canadian Division in the Lens Avion sector, either side of the River Suchet, where the artillery rejoined it. The 24th Division was to the left, and from 7 May the 52nd Lowland Division on the right. The German defences were based along the embankment of a curving section of railway line, known as the Bull Ring, in the southern part of the line. The flooding of the land adjacent to the river, which was overlooked by a slag heap occupied by the Germans in the centre, and the widespread building ruins of the area strengthened with barbed wire traps all along the division's front. Beginning almost immediately, the division began to patrol in No Mans Land and conduct trench raids. These raids had the aim of obtaining identification of the German units in the area so that a picture could be built up of German force movements during the other sequences of the their spring offensive and later defensive moves. One such raid during the night of 23-4 July was conducted by whole companies from the 11th KRRC and 12th Kings, two platoons from the 7th DCLI and one platoon from the 7th SLI. Also involved in many of these raids were engineers from the field companies carrying explosive charges sufficient to destroy the Germans' dugouts. These raids were closely supported by the artillery, trench mortars and machine gunners. The raids met with varying degrees of success, and both sides frequently used gas in this sector. On the 27th of August, the whole division moved to the right, entirely south of the River Suchet on a three-brigade front. Patrolling and trench raiding were continued. At the end of September, the First Army was ordered to advance along with the rest of the front. The initial moves of this by the 20th Division were an attack on the line south of Lens at Aikville carried out by the 7th DCLI, which on the night of 27-28 September captured 1,200 yards 1, meters of the German front-line trench and held it against a counterattack the next day. On 2 October, seeing that the Germans were withdrawing to the Hindenburg Line, the division advanced on a front of six battalions from all three brigades from the left, 7th DCLI, 12th Kings, 12th KRRC, 6th KSLI, 2nd Scottish Rifles and 11th KRRC, with the remainder in reserve. With the close support of the artillery, advances of up to 1,000 yards 910 meters were made across the Bull Ring, and the village of Maricourt was entered, their private. James Towers of the 2nd Scottish Rifles won the VC after volunteering to take a message to a trapped patrol after five other messengers had been killed. He subsequently led the patrol to safety after dark. The Germans left many machine gun nests to slow the pursuit, which were slowly overrun. The division was relieved between 5 and 8 October by the 12th Eastern Division, except for the artillery which was sent to the Cherisi, Fautain area 7 miles 11 kilometers southeast of Arras. Topic. Hundred days. The division spent the rest of the month training around Manchi Breton, and did not take part in the general advance through Flanders until early November. Then, the division and its artillery under orders of the 19th Western Division were both moved to the Cambrai area. The artillery supported attacks by the 19th Division on 4 November, at Genlin 19 miles 31 kilometers to the northwest of Cambrai, at Roesson on 6 November, Bavay on 8 November, a further 3 miles 4.8 kilometers and 5 miles 8.0 kilometers further on respectively. The advance was not unhindered and both artillery brigades were shelled and machine gunned, the sea battery of the 91st having an ammunition dump blown up. By 9 November the artillery was a further 8 miles 13 kilometers further on, some 6 miles 9.7 kilometers south of Mons, where it came under orders of the 24th Division. The remainder of the division moved up behind the leading troops and by 9 November was in Bavay. On 7 November the division had been made responsible for feeding the civilians in the areas it held, it also set up soup kitchens for the refugees heading east before sending them on. 
On 10 November the 60th Brigade was placed under orders on 24th Division and relieved the 73rd and 74th Brigade on the front, east of the Mons Mabiuge Road 2 miles .2 km north of Mabiuge. Here the 12th KRRC lost a regimental Sergeant Major Rawson, who had landed with the division in France in 1915. The 12th KRRC and 12th RB were at the front when the armistice came into effect. In late November, the division was concentrated around Moreau, 11 miles 18 kilometers northwest of Albert and began disbanding in January 1919. During the war the division lost 35,470 mean killed, wounded and missing. Topic. Order of battle The following units served with the division 59th Brigade 10th Service Battalion, King's Royal Rifle Corps disbanded February 1918 11th Service Battalion, King's Royal Rifle Corps 10th Service Battalion, Rifle Brigade disbanded February 1918 11th Service Battalion, Rifle Brigade 2nd Battalion, Cameronians Scottish Rifles joined February 1918 59th Machine Gun Company joined 3 March 1916, left to form 20th Battalion Machine Gun Corps MGC 15 March 1918 59th Trench Mortar Battery formed July 1916 60th Brigade 6th Service Battalion Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire Light Infantry disbanded February 1918 6th Service Battalion King's Shropshire Light Infantry 12th Service Battalion King's Royal Rifle Corps 12th Service Battalion Rifle Brigade 60th Machine Gun Company joined the 3rd of March 1916 left to form 20th Battalion MGC the 15th of March 1918 60th Trench Mortar Battery formed July 1916 61st Brigade 7th Service Battalion Somerset Light Infantry 7th Service Battalion Duke of Cornwall's Light Infantry 7th Service Battalion King's Own Yorkshire Light Infantry disbanded February 1918 11th Service Battalion Durham Light Infantry to Division Pioneers January 1915 12th Service Battalion King's Liverpool Regiment from Division Troops January 1915 61st Machine Gun Company joined the 3rd of March 1916 left to form 20th Battalion MGC the 15th of March 1918 61st Trench Mortar Battery formed July 1916 Divisional Troops 12th Battalion King's Liverpool Regiment to 61st Brigade January 1915 11th Battalion, Durham Light Infantry, Pioneers, from 61st Brigade January 1915. 9th Battalion, Devonshire Regiment, left April 1915. 14th Motor Machine Gun Battery, joined the 26th of January 1915 left the 22nd of April 1916. Division Mounted Troops. HQ, D Squadron and MG Section, Westmoreland and Cumberland Yeomanry joined 24 June 1915 left 29 April 1916. 20th Divisional Cyclist Company, Army Cyclist Corps formed the 22nd of December 1914, left 17 May 1916. 217th Company, MGC, joined March 1917, moved into 20th Battalion MGC 15 March 1918. 20th Battalion Machine Gun Corps, formed 15 March 1918 absorbing Brigade MG Companies. 20th Divisional Train Army Service Corps. 158th, 159th, 160th and 161st Companies 32nd Mobile Veterinary Section Army Veterinary Corps 
221st Divisional Employment Company, joined the 30th of June 1917. Royal Artillery X Brigade, Royal Field Artillery (RFA), broken up the 30th of August 1916. 91 Brigade, RFA. XCII Howitzer Brigade, RFA. 93 Brigade, RFA, left December 1916. 20th Divisional Ammunition Column RFA. 20th Heavy Battery, Royal Garrison Artillery, raised with the division but moved independently to France in August 1915. V.20 Heavy Trench Mortar Battery RFA formed May 1916, broken up the 2nd of February 1918. By.20, Y.20 and C.20 Medium Mortar Batteries RFA formed May 1916, Z Battery broken up in February 1918, and distributed to X and Y Batteries Royal Engineers 83rd Field Company. 84th Field Company, 96th Field Company, from 26th Division in January 1915, 20th Divisional Signals Company, Royal Army Medical Corps, 60th Field Ambulance, 61st Field Ambulance, 62nd Field Ambulance, 33rd Sanitary Section, left the 24th of April 1917. Topic. Victoria Cross recipients Major Edward Cooper 12th King's Royal Rifle Corps Major Wilfred Edwards 7th King's Own Yorkshire Light Infantry Sergeant David Jones VC 12th King's Liverpool Regiment Lieutenant George Allen Malling RAMC Rifleman Albert Edward Shepherd 12th King's Royal Rifle Corps Private James Towers 2nd Cameronians Scottish Rifles Topic Memorial Topic General Officer Commanding Major General Richard Hutton Davies CB September 1914 the 8th of April 1916 Major General William Douglas Smith CB the 8th of April 1916 the 3rd of April 1918 Major General George Glass Sandman Carey CB CMG the 3rd of April 1918 the 11th of November 1918 Topic. Battle insignia The practice of wearing battalion-specific insignia often called battle patches in the BEF began in mid-1915 with the arrival of units of Kitchener's armies and was widespread after the Somme battles of 1916. The patches shown were adopted by the division during late 1917, and were designed to an overall divisional scheme of a simple shape for each brigade and a number of stripes below that indicating the seniority of the battalion, according to the regimental order of precedence. <laughs> Notes <laughs>